Thank you for that introduction, Marante. It was much appreciated. Welcome to News Channel 12. I'm lead anchor Robert Dobbs, and these are your morning headlines. Lawmakers from both political parties are, reaching to, are reacting to the investigation done into the Tennessee Department of Children's Services. It comes after employees told several news outlets that they were ordered to cover up dangerous conditions inside a state-run home for abused and neglected children. As chair of the Children and Family Affairs Subcommittee, I am working to gather additional information from the department and others about what happened, Representative Mary Littleton, a Republican from Dixon, said. We must ensure that every child in state custody receives the best care Tennessee can provide. Senator Jeff Yarbrough, a Democrat from Nashville, echoed similar sentiments. It is important for the department to make some clear statements. It is not going to have a cover-up culture, Yarbrough said. As we reported, a former director at the Department of Children's Services, Brenda Myers, and a current employee, Jared Holmes, inspected a DCS-run transitional home for abused and neglected children last July. Myers wrote a memo immediately after the inspection detailing the dangerous conditions for the children at the transitional home. There were holes in the walls, exposed electrical wiring, the kids did not have enough food to eat, Holmes said. Myers was asked, if you went to a home like that and saw conditions like that, what would you do? We would recommend removal, Myers said. Myers and Holmes thought DCS Commissioner Margie Quinn would immediately work to fix the problems after seeing the report. But instead, Myers said she was called into a meeting where Commissioner Quinn was upset Myers had written the report and voiced concern it would fall into the hands of the media. She indicated that I was not a team player, Myers said. She knew very well the conditions that were out there. I mean, she said, if we think this is bad, wait until we go to the one in Clarksville. Later that same day, she said a supervisor told her to write a new memo. He told me that I needed to write a new report that would mitigate the findings from the first so that if there was a media request, he could give an updated report to the media that would show the conditions weren't so bad, Myers said. Senator Yarbrough said the department cannot fix problems if it cannot be honest about the problems it has. The evaluator's job is not to be a team player for the people who are under evaluation or for her supervisors, Senator Yarbrough said. When there are children in Tennessee that are in state custody that are living in substandard conditions, that is not a public relations problem. That's a problem problem, Senator Yarbrough said. The employees said DCS stopped inspections of transitional homes. DCS leadership does not want it in writing, anything in writing, to reflect the actual conditions there. And in fact, they, are, they already know what the conditions are like, Myers said. DCS said it does not comment on past employees. It did not dispute what Myers said about the meeting or the memo she wrote the next day. The department said it can take time to get bids to make repairs at transitional housing where some kids act out and cause damage. Now, in other news, as lawmakers were discussing mental health, some House members discussed they felt the issue was getting worse, noting they know instances of suicide in their own lives. Representative Mike Sparks said he was working through a class at Middle Tennessee State University where he thought it would be worth exploring targeting mental health resources on digital media. He said he called former Rutherford County Mayor Bill Ketron to see if he could arrange his instructor to do the video. It's a crisis level, Bill calls back. Do you know what he said? Sparks said to snickers and laughter during the House Finance Ways and Means Committee. This is why it's serious. He, sa he said we had a suicide this morning on campus. Let's leverage higher education. Let's leverage brilliant people. You've got to reach these kids. However, as is typical in larger committee meetings, lawmakers have said conversations at times eliciting laughter. Given the topic, Sparks felt that wasn't the right moment for humor. MTSU responded to a suicide on campus inside Peck Hall. It's political science and English building. The death occurred overnight and police later discovered it was a contract employee through the university. I don't want suicide on my effing campus. It may be funny to some, but it ain't funny to me, Representative Mike Sparks, a Republican of Smyrna said. 
We need a task force that meets weekly with higher education and K through 12 leaders. I don't want to see it happen in my district like it did. Commissioner Mary Williams amplified the discussion about mental health for kids between kindergarten and senior year of high school. Williams oversees the Department of Mental Health and Substance Abuse. If you look at the research done, there's 40% increase in anxiety and we had the same increase in depression, Commissioner Williams said. We saw a higher rate of kids attempting suicide and that's just unbelievable and at younger ages we have ever seen. If you look at 15 to 18, you're seeing commingled substance abuse concerns. In the 2023 Mental Health in America report, 17% of kids between 12 and 17 years old have experienced at least one major depressive episode in the last year. All told, 71% of kids go untreated in Tennessee with only 13% receiving any kind of consistent treatment. Williams said Tennessee ranks in the bottom tier of access to mental health care. Tennessee reported the second highest number in 2021 for kids from 10 to 18 years old dying by suicide. That is the last year available for the Tennessee Department of Health. Right now, the department is waiting on revenues from a $250 million trust fund bond that will help fund initiatives across the state. Representative Antonio Parkinson, a Democrat of Memphis, said it's vital to keep funding the department. As one of the lawmakers who knew someone personally died from suicide recently, the urge for progress was top of his mind. We as a state, we are always reactive instead of proactive, Parkinson said. Why do we have to wait for a crisis when we can intervene before there is a crisis? I feel like the commissioner's heart is in this, but, I, but do I think she has all the tools she needs to be as effective as she has the talent to be? No. She's up against a state that either doesn't get it or doesn't understand the crisis we are in. That will wrap up our headlines for this morning, and now we're going to kick it back to Lorante for some weather. Lorante, what's it like outside right now? 